is in the notes for AP Calculus on the topic of linear equations. So let's talk about what a linear equation is, first of all. A linear equation represents a relationship between two variables with a constant rate of change, the other word for rate of change is slope. And this is a term, rate of change, so we'll be coming back to it a lot throughout the year in calculus. So since a linear equation has a constant rate of change or slope, that causes this graph to be a straight line. So what is slope? Refresh your memory on that. The slope, which sometimes we use the letter M to represent, of a straight line that passes through two points, just write them in general, x sub 1, y sub 1 for the coordinates of the first point, and x sub 2, y sub 2 for the coordinates of the second point. And so the slope, since it's the rate of change, we're looking at the change in the y coordinate divided by the change in the x coordinate. And you can also write that with a delta y and delta x. Remember, delta and math and science represent the change. This is the change in y and the change in x. So the way you calculate that is by starting with one of the points, it doesn't matter which one, and then taking the difference of the y coordinates to find the change in the y coordinate over the difference of the x coordinates. So you can start with y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, or y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2, as long as you start with the same point. And now we're going to look at two of the most frequently used forms of linear equations. The first is point slope. And in this form, this really comes from the slope form, which we'll just see it in just a second here. But this is useful when you're writing linear equations. Oftentimes, point slope form is the easiest one to start out with. And it's named that because all you need is the slope and a point. So let's see where this point slope form of the linear equation comes from. And it really comes from the slope formula right here. So remember the slope is often written as m. And I'm going to use this form of it right here. With y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So if we want to get rid of the uh, fraction there in this equation, all we have to do is multiply both sides of the equation by the denominator, which is x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Same thing on the other side to balance it out. x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And then what happens on the right side, x sub 2 minus x sub 1, x sub 1 minus x sub 1 cancels out, produces out. So all you're left with is m, the slope, times x sub 2 minus x sub 1 equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1. It's all the left on the side. And then we can switch the sides. Notice it looks slightly different than this because for point slope form, you only need one point. You don't want to plug in both points because if you plugged in both points like this, here, you'd have to plug in the slope, two points. You wouldn't have be left with a useful linear equation. All you'd be left with is a true statement like 5 equals 5 or negative 2 equals negative 2. So we only plug in one point and we leave off the x, the x sub 2 and y sub 2. You just leave as x and y basically. And switch the sides here. So we'll have y minus y sub 1 equals m, and then x minus x sub 1. So that is where point slope form comes from. Just comes from the slope form. Slope intercept form is also another useful form. And this one is typically easiest to use if you're graphing a linear equation or working with a graph. And it's the easiest to use slope intercept form. So remember this form, you write as y equals mx plus b, the name slope intercept, comes from the fact that you need the slope, m, and b here represents the y-intercept. All right, now let's look at some special types of lines. First, let's look at parallel lines. Recall that parallel lines have the same slope and do not intersect. So they're not the same one. So you can see the slope on this one. They're both in slope intercept form. The slope you can see is two thirds. And the slope on this one is also two thirds. Okay. And so they're parallel. You can see that the y intercept on this one is one, and the y intercept on this one is negative two. So the y intercept of one is right here, y intercept of negative two is here. So those are different. But what they have in common is their slope. 
to the positive two thirds, the numerator number tells you to go up or down. In this case, positive two will be up two, and the denominator tells you whether to go right or left. Positive three will be right three. So up two, right three, takes you right there. You do that way. And the second linear equation has the same slope, so it also goes up two, right three for the y-intercept. Right there, you can see that's what causes them to be parallel, having the same slope and different y-intercepts. Now it's about perpendicular lines. Remember, perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite reciprocals. Okay, so there's two different things here we're talking about. Opposite and reciprocals. So let's see how that works. And that means, of course, since they're perpendicular, they intersect at a right or a 90 degree angle. So you can see that right here. Intersected a right angle there. So the slope of the first linear equation here is positive four thirds, and the y-intercept is negative one. So let's see how that works. The y-intercept there is negative one right down here. The slope is four thirds. So you go up from the y-intercept, one, two, three, four, right three, one, two, three. See that gives you that one. And in order for the other one to be perpendicular to it, its slope, has to first be the opposite of this one. Opposite means one's positive, the other's negative. So that's why since this slope is positive, in order to be perpendicular to it, this one has to be negative. And then the reciprocal refers to switching the numerator to number. So instead of four thirds, you can see this is three fourths. So the slope is negative three fourths, which makes it perpendicular, and its wider set happens to be different. Could have been the same here. But that's the positive one. And so if you go from there, notice with a negative slope, you can put that negative, treat that negative as being part of the numerator or denominator. It's part of the numerator, you can go down three, one, two, three, right four, one, two, three, four. Would give you that line. Notice if you put the negative in the denominator, then you would go up three for the line step, one, two, three, and left four, one, two, three, four. Either way, you do the same one. Now let's look at some other special types of linear equations, and that's horizontal and vertical lines. So recall that horizontal lines, just think, you get mixed up on the terms, comes from the same word as horizon. When you look off at the horizon, it's like a horizontal line. So horizontal lines have a slope of zero, since there's no change in the y coordinate. Okay? So remember our slope formula, is a change in the y coordinate divided by the change in the x coordinate. But if you look at a horizontal line like this, no matter what point you look at, this is 1, 2, negative 2, 2, the y coordinate on a horizontal line is always the same. In this case, it's always 2. So since there's no change in the y coordinate, you get 0 when you calculate its slope on the numerator, and then x coordinate could be any number, depending on which points you use. And 0 divided by any number that's not 0 is 0. This is the same what times a number gives you 0? Well, 0 is. And since the horizontal line has a constant y coordinate, like in this case, the equation is in the form y equals c, where c is a constant. In this case, you can see that constant is 2. Because no matter where you are on this line, the y coordinate is always 2. And that's what creates a horizontal line, and the y coordinate is staying the same. All right, now let's take a look at vertical lines. With vertical lines, they have an undefined slope. Okay. Again, going back to our slope formula there. Remember, a vertical line has no change in the x coordinate. And delta x is on the denominator, so that makes the change in the x coordinate is 0. If you take a look at a vertical line here, you can see right there or right there, any point on this vertical line has the same x coordinate of negative 3. So the change, there is no change in the x coordinate. No change. If there's no change in the x coordinate, that means the denominator is 0. And you could really have any change in the y coordinate, depending on which points you use. So this is saying what times zero gives you, say, one or two or three or negative one. Well, what times zero gives you some other number that's not zero? Nothing does. Hence the name undefined. There is no defined answer to that. So that's why we have zero on the denominator and some other number on the numerator. It's always undefined. And the equation of a vertical line, notice it has a constant x-coordinate, no matter where we are here. x-coordinate is negative three. So its equation is in the 
form x equals c, where c is some constant. In this case, that constant is negative 2. Okay. Now let's take a look at some example problems. So this one says, based on the information given, write the linear equation in two parts to this, point-slope form and slope-intercept form. This first one says there's a line with a slope of 4. So we're given a slope on this one. So for this n is 4. And it passes through the point 7, 2. So that's like our x sub 1, y sub 1. So which form would be easier to start with? Well, we have a point and a slope. Well, point slope form, right? Would be easiest to start with, which usually is the case unless you're given the line or stuff. It's usually easier to start with point slope form. So in point slope form, it would be y minus, or really, I'll just write it down here, y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. Remember, this is the general point slope form of a linear equation. Now, all we have to do is to substitute our specific point and our specific slope. So it would be y minus the y coordinate here is 2 of our point, equals the slope we're given is 4 times x minus the x coordinate is 7. So that's our answer for part A. That's our linear equation and point slope. Now, we think the easiest way would be to get this into slope-intercept form. Well, probably the easiest way, the most efficient way, would be to distribute out the 4. Basically, in slope-intercept form, you want the y by itself, isolated. So we first distribute out the 4. We see 4x minus 28. And then just add over the 2. We get y equals 4x negative 28 plus 2 is negative 26. So that would be your second part of your answer. Same equation, just a different form of it. For part B now, that's in slope intercept. Now let's take a look at what, where the information they give you is a little bit different. This time it gives you two points. The line passes through. Negative 2, 7, and 3, negative 5. So one of these could be x sub 1, y sub 1. The other x sub 2, y sub 2. So unlike the other example, we aren't given the slope. So that's the first thing we should calculate. To find our linear equation. And remember, it doesn't matter which of these you start with, as long as you're consistent, start with the same one on both the y and the x. So we start with this point. Change in the y would be 7 minus negative 5 over, we started with x1, y1, so we'll start with that for the x's as well. Negative 2 minus 3. That gives you 7 minus negative 5, the negatives cancel out. 7 plus 5 is 12 over negative 2 minus 3, negative 5. Okay. Your slope is negative 12 fifths. So again, let's start in point slope form. That's easier to work with. But notice something like this. First problem, we have actually two points. So it doesn't matter. You can use either one of these points in order to get the uh, equation. It may look a little different in point slope form, but it's really the same equation. So let's say we start and start using by using this one. So the y minus the y coordinate, y sub 1, it is 7, if I use this first point, equals the slope we just figured out is negative 12 fifths, times x minus the x coordinate is negative 2, so if you subtract a negative, the negatives cancel out, it makes it positive. So that would be your answer for part A, if you use the first point. Or, we could have also used the second point. So let's just see, I mean, I'll keep it up to uh, write it using both points, but just to show you it's the same thing. This would be y minus this y part is negative 5, so that negative plus 5, equals the slope is negative 12 fifths, times x minus the x part is 3. So you could write it in point slope form. There's two possible ways we could write it. Now those look like different equations, but they're actually the same equation, just with slightly different. So we can see that if we put it in slope-intercept form, which we'll do for our next part. So in slope-intercept form, first you would distribute out the negative 12 fifths, and then times the 
times 2 would be negative 24 fifths. And then you would just add the 7. But adding 7 is the same as adding 35 fifths. So this would be 0 to be a common number. So in slope intercept form for part B, our answer will be y equals negative 12 fifths x. And then negative 25 fifths plus 35 fifths is 11 fifths. Now, let's quickly check in our head and see if we use the second form of, of the point-slope point form of the equation, if we would get the same thing. Well, negative 12 fifths times x would still give you negative 12 fifths x. And negative 12 fifths times negative 3 would be positive 36 fifths. So we'd have positive 36 fifths, but then we'd have to subtract the 5, which is 25 fifths. So if we had positive 36 fifths minus 25 fifths, and see, that would still give you positive 11 fifths. So that's a way to confirm, well, yep, these actually are the same equation. They just look different. This little bit or so form, though, there's only one way to write it. All right, let's take a look at some uh, parallel and perpendicular line problems now. It says, I want to write the line with an x-intercept of negative 2 that's parallel to the line 3x plus 4y equals 3. So... Start with the fact that we have an x-intercept of negative 2. X-intercept means that's where it touches the x-axis. And if we look at all the points on the x-axis here, notice what they all have in common. 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, 0. See how they all have a y-coordinate 0? So since we're given the x-intercept as negative 2, it's really giving us the point negative 2, 0. And we're told it's parallel. To this line. Remember, parallel lines we know have the same slope. So we just need to figure out what's the slope of this line, and then we'll know the slope of the line we're looking for as well. And probably the easiest way to figure out the slope of this line is to isolate the y, get it in slope intercept form. So if you first subtract the 3x, and then divide by 4, y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 3 fourths. See the slope, mx plus b, there's a slope right for the x, so it'd be negative 3 fourths. And since it wants to be parallel, then to have it be the same slope. So our slope is also going to be negative 3 fourths. That's all symbol for parallel, not 11. And now let's start with point slope form. So in point slope form, the y minus the y coordinate, but the y coordinate here is just zero, so you don't really have to put minus zero. That doesn't change it at all, right? You could, but you don't have to. So y equals the slope we just figured out is negative three fourths times x minus the x coordinate is negative two, so that negative cancels out, makes it plus two. So there's your answer in point slope form for part A. And then it's pretty easy from there to get it in slope intercept form if you just distribute out. A negative three fourths, so you'll have negative three fourths x minus negative three fourths times two. You could make that negative six fourths, but that reduces to negative three halves. Or you can just see that two goes into four twice, and you'll have for negative three halves. So that is for part B and slope intercept. All right, now let's take a look at one where it's perpendicular rather than parallel. So this is the line perpendicular to this line, containing this point right here, 9, 4. All right, so perpendicular lines, remember, we look for view that these have slopes that are opposite reciprocals. So again, we need to figure out what's the slope of this line that is perpendicular to. So we do that by isolating the y. So if we add the 15x to both sides of the equation, over to the right side, and then divide by 9, that'll give us y equals 15 nines reduces, you can divide those both by 3, to give you 5 thirds, x, and 8 nines doesn't reduce. And so the slope of this line, you can see, it's 
both are equal to one is five thirds. But this time we don't want it to be parallel, we want it to be opposite reciprocal. So here's the little symbol for perpendicular. So our perpendicular slope covers opposite reciprocals. Since this slope is positive, we want it to be negative. That makes it the opposite. And to be the reciprocal, we flip the numerator and denominator. So instead of 5 thirds, it'd be 3 fifths. So our slope is going to be negative 3 fifths. And now we know this is the point it contains. So again, let's start with point slope form. So it'd be y minus the y coordinate 4 equals the slope, negative 3 fifths, times x minus x coordinate. So that would be your answer for part A. Point slope form. And again, to get it in slope intercept form, we just need to multiply that out. Distribute out the uh, negative 3 fifths first. So you have y minus 4 equals negative 3 fifths times x is negative 3 fifths x. And negative 3 fifths times negative 9, negative times the negative is positive. 3 times 9 is 27 fifths. And then if you just add the 4, and that's like adding 20 fifths. You end up with y equals negative 3 fifths x. 27 plus 20 gives you 47 fifths. So that would be your answer for part B and slope for simple. And now let's take a look at a special case. It says it's a vertical line that goes through the point negative 3, 4. So we've got a vertical line like this. Well, with a vertical line, the first thing we know is, well, what's the slope? Remember the slope of any vertical line, since there is no change in the x coordinate, we end up with a zero of the denominator on the slope form, which is undefined. For part A, we know the slope is undefined. And for part B, it says write an equation of the line. Well, remember, a vertical line, the x coordinate stays constant. So the equation of a vertical line is just going to be x equals. And what does x have to equal in order to go through this point? Well, x would have to be negative 3, wouldn't it? Otherwise, it wouldn't go through that point. So there's your equation of your vertical line. And finally, in part c, it says write the equation of the line perpendicular to the line that passes through this point to negative 8. So now we want it to be perpendicular to this vertical line. Well, if you have it perpendicular to a vertical line, you're going to get a horizontal line, aren't you? And then you create angle. And a horizontal line, remember, since the y coordinate never changes, if the y equals some constant, now what would y have to equal in order to go through this point? Well, it would have to equal negative 8 in order to go through that point. So that's your answer for part C. Okay, so that's looking at right from the, starting with the equation here. But now let's look at some where they're given the graph and they have to write the equation. This says just write the linear equation in slope intercept form using the given graph. So we're given this point 4, 7. And it looks like we only have one point, but we actually know this one right here. You can see it intersects right there at 0, 2. And if we want it in slope intercept form, which remember is y plus mx plus b, we need the slope and the y intercept, and we actually have that on this one, so that makes that pretty easy. So the y equals the slope, we can just calculate here. Difference of the y, so that'd be 7 minus 2 over difference of the x is 4 minus 0. You need 5 fourths. So do y equals 5 fourths x, and then the y intercept here we can see is 2. So plus 2. So if you already can tell the y intercept from the graph, that's the easiest to write the equation. But notice on this one, can't quite tell where that y intercept exactly is, right? So, but the difference is that we're given two points here that are not the y-intercept in one of them. 
So let's use these two first to calculate the slope. So the difference of the y's, if we start with this point, would be 45 minus 25 over the difference of the x is 20 minus 55. So that gives you 20 over negative 35. You can reduce that, you can divide those both by 5, so you get negative 4 over 7. There's our slope, negative 4 sevenths. Uh, we don't have the y-intercepts, so in this case, it's probably easiest not to start in slope-intercept form and just start in point-slope form. So in point-slope form, we can say y minus, and you can use either one of these points. I'm just going to use the second one here, 55, 25. So it would be y minus 25 equals the slope, negative 4 sevenths, times x minus 55. So that's point slope form, but it asks us to get in slope intercept form. So again, if we just distribute that out, be negative 4 sevenths x, negative 4 sevenths times negative 55 would be positive. And let's see, 4 times 50 is 200, 4 times 5 is 20, so 220. Oops. And then just add over the 25, solve for y, and you want to figure out how many sevenths that is. So I'm just going to be at 7 quarters, how much money do you have? You have a dollar 75, so that would be 175. So that would be y equals negative 4 sevenths of x, and then 220 plus 175 would give you 395. And then if, just check if you want to see if your answer is reasonable or not, based on the graph. What you can do is just say, well, roughly how many times would three go into, th sorry, seven go into 395? Well, if this was 350, it'd go in 50 times, right? So it goes in more than 50. But if it was 420, it'd go in 60 times. And it's less than 420. So it looks like it's between 50 and 60. And you look right here, and sure enough, it is between 50. So that is a reasonable answer. All right. Finally, let's take a look at we're given a table of values here. So it says the functions f and g are continuous functions. That just means there's no breaks in them. They're all it's all connected. Okay? That have the values given by the tables below. Determine whether each function could be a linear equation and explain why or why not. So we want to know could if the other equation, and then explain why or why. So to be a linear equation, let's go back to the definition of a linear equation. A linear equation is a relationship between two variables with a constant rate of change or slope. So the slope has to be constant, has to be the same, right? And the slope, remember, comes from the change in y and the change in x. So let's see if these could have a, have a constant slope or not based on what we can tell about them. We've just written in function notation, but really f of x is just a function notation of a way of writing y. Same thing here with g of x, it's a way of writing y. So let's take a look at the change in the x coordinate and the change in the y coordinate. Well, each, so basically each of these rows here represents one point on the function. So you could just plug them into the slope formula, but it might even be easier just to uh, look at it from the table here. So the x coordinate increases by 3, so the change in the x between these two points is positive 3, and the y coordinate decreases by 2, so it would be minus 2. So the slope, which is the change in y over the change in x, would be negative 2 thirds. Okay. Now it's between the other two points. Between 7 and 13, and the x coordinate increases by 6. Between 18 and 14, the y coordinate decreases by 4. So the change in y over change in x would be negative 4, 6. And notice that reduces to be negative 2 thirds, so it's really the same. 
So based on the points we're given, they do have a complex slope. Doesn't guarantee it's a linear equation, because there could be some other points where the slope is not constant, potentially. But based on what we have, and since these are the same, this could be a linear equation. So we could say that it is f of x could be a linear equation. And to explain why or why not, you could say something like, since the slopes between the given points are equal or the same or constant, however you want to say it. Let's take a look at the next one here. This one, again, if we look at the change in the x-coordinate and the change in the y-coordinate, here the x-coordinate increases by 2, the y-coordinate increases by 6. So the slope, which would be the change in the y over the change in the x, would be 6 over 2, which is produces to just be 3. And then here the x-coordinate increases by 6, the y coordinate increases by 11, okay, so that would be 11 over 6, which doesn't reduce. So here you can see the slopes, slope is not constant. So here, this could be a linear equation for f of x, okay, because the same here, because these aren't the same slope, there's no way g of x would be linear, otherwise these would have to be the same. So you can say g of x is not a linear equation. Since the slopes between the given points are not equal, or not the same. notes for AP Calculus on the topic of linear equations.